As the country grapples with the highly contagious Delta variant, more children are getting infected with COVID-19. In fact, the number of infected kids aged 9 and below has almost doubled in the past month. How can we keep our children protected from a more aggressive strain? And is COVID-19 vaccinations needed for them right now? On the program today, your guide to keeping your children safe from the COVID-19 Delta variant. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome to MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. For most of the pandemic, children were at low risk of catching COVID-19, but now they're more vulnerable, especially to the Delta variant, leaving many parents wondering how best is it to keep them safe. Our guests are here today to tell us what we need to know. With us is Dr. Anilin Reyes. She's a pediatric infectious disease specialist and assistant professor from the USC Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. Also with us is Dr. Anjanet De Leon. She's a department manager of the Pediatric Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine of the Lung Center of the Philippines. Now, we understand that the increase in COVID-19 cases among children can be very alarming for parents. I'll start first with Dr. Anjanette. I'd like for you to share with our viewers how the new strain, the Delta variant, is impacting children. You know what? It's just like any other virus and right now wherein there's an increasing number of patients or cases of pediatric COVID cases in the country. Hindi siya gaya ng dati na pa isa isa meron kaming kaso ng COVID, but more or less ngayon sa isang araw meron tayong nakukuha. Pero hindi siya kagaya ng iba na, na mas grabe in the sense that a lot of them gets intubated gaya ng mga adult patients natin. But most of them would have mild symptoms, meaning they have cough, colds, um, fever, parang trangkaso. Minsan nagkakaroon sila ng sakit ng katawan. But there are some, most especially yung mga pasyente na merong mga comorbid conditions, kagaya ng asthma, yung mga batang may mga cancer, mga batang may mga sak sakit sa buto. Um, sakit sa, sa dugo, mm -hmm. the complicated patients, they are most uh, at risk of having COVID infections. Now, I'd like to talk about vaccines. Dr. Yen, let's talk about vaccines and how effective is it against the Delta variant for children? So data have shown that the, all the vaccines that are approved by the Philippine FDA and those who are approved by the emergency use authorization are still effective with the Delta variant. So all the vaccines have their effect effectiveness of around 60 to 95 percent and the even their effectiveness studies of severe and for those critical cases are more than 95 percent. So it was noted also in some data that the more the country are vaccinated, the lesser are the incidence of Delta variants. Pag-usapan naman natin yung mga breakthrough infections. How does, how does this COVID-19 vaccine actually protect you? And bakit, pa, bakit nagkakaroon pa rin ng mga breakthrough infections yung mga fully protected ng, ng COVID vaccine? In our hospital, we also check the number of patients who are vaccinated. And whenever the patient is uh, admitted due to COVID, we have to recheck if the patient is vaccinated or not. So in most of our patients, those who went into critical and severe stages, they are not vaccinated. But uh, some patients who, have, who are in the asymptomatic and mild cases, they are vaccinated. We want to emphasize that the COVID-19 vaccine is our best protection against the Delta variant. But while our children remain unvaccinated, there are steps that we can take to minimize the risk of bringing home the virus to them. Dr. Anjanet, worth reminding everyone how we can stay healthy during this very uncertain time. The best thing that we can do is to, to keep ourselves informed. We have to be made aware of what the illness is all about. Minsan yun ang problema sa ngayon, kulang sa impormasyon ang mga tao. Kaya natatakot sila magpabakuna, natatakot sila magpatingin, nagtatakot sila dahil hindi nila alam kung anong mangyayari sa kanila. So one thing that, that one can do is to, um, the usual, is to keep ourselves clean, model a good behavior to our children and to people around. Ibig sabihin, 
maghugas tayo ng kamay. That's the, di ba, we wash our hands for at least 20 seconds. Parati nating narinig to do social distancing. So that's when you when you raise your hands up high, ito po yung dalawang metro. So that's the distance that the child should be having so that more or less they are protected. And then it's very important also that they should um, model good behavior. Ibig sabihin, pagpasok sa bahay, bago mm-hmm. halikan, yakapin ang ating mga anak, maliligo muna ang isang tao para at least kahit paano kung merong mikrobyo na nasa ating katawan, we are assured that that this is um, removed from us when we take a bath, we wash ourselves with soap and water. And as much as possible, importante rin that we should uh, encourage our children on the right way of wearing the mask. Kaya a reminder to the parents, don't forget to care for your own well-being so we can best care for uh, our children when we take care of ourselves too. Now, COVID-19 vaccines are our shot of hope to end the pandemic, but which ones are safe for children? We have the answers after a short break, so stay with us here on MedTalk Health Talk. You're watching CNN Philippines. The country continues to see a rise in COVID-19 cases, even among children. Today, we want to provide honest and clear information on how the new, more aggressive Delta variant can impact them. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. Now, while more Filipino children are getting infected with COVID-19, these children typically display mild uh, to no symptoms at all. Dr. Anjanette, Walk us through some of the warning signs of COVID-19 in children. The, the child would usually have fever, cough, colds, parang trangkaso, sumasakit yung katawan, minsan sumasakit yung chan, and then some of them would present as rashes. So it's, it's the usual uh, flu-like symptoms that we see left and right. The, but it's important, it, what is important is we check uh, the exposure. Ibig sabihin, baka na-exposed to sa isang tao may COVID or somebody else who is sick. So this is the turning point for us to see and check if this is really COVID that the child has. Well, there are reports that the Delta variant presents a little bit different for children as well as adolescents. Dr. Yen, can we discuss this a bit? Uh, merong bang mga bukod-tanging symptomas uh, na pinapakita mga bata kapag infected with COVID-19, especially the Delta variant? So since December 2019, the COVID virus evolved rapidly and they change as they spread, multiply, and they mutate. So we already have a lot of variants in the Philippines. We have this Alpha variant, the Beta variant, the Gamma, the Delta, then the PH3 variants. So they said that the studies have shown that the Delta is more transmissible and more contagious. And there are also a lot of studies that that were presented wherein the Delta variant uh, uh, presents more with colds and headache. However, in the Philippines, in most of our children, the presenting manifestations still manifest with fever, colds, and cough. How often does COVID-19 infection lead to severe illness in children? Yeah, it's really true. Especially now, we already have a lot of COVID cases in children. So before, we only have around, in my personal case, I only have around one to two cases per month, but now I have four to five cases per day. Some are in home care and some are hospitalized. So those children which are hospitalized and who goes to severe and critical cases are those who are asthmatic. So patients who are asthmatic, it's very hard for them to, if they really have the COVID, they go to cytokine storm. So my patients also with cerebral palsy, those who had, who had leukemia, they also went to severe cases. So all those children with comorbidities, with asthma, leukemia, kidney diseases, those with uh, other immunocompromised conditions, they they usually go to severe cases. Is being vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated, a big help in in protecting their children? 
So because uh, studies have shown that the vaccination can really protect countries. So in countries where there is high vac vaccination rate, Delta variants are also decreased. So uh, in the Philippines, the, they already approved the, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, already approved the vaccination for children for 12 years and above. However, we are still waiting for the final approval and we still have to vaccinate those persons who are at risk, like the elderly, the healthcare workers, because some healthcare workers are not yet vaccinated. So if time will come that we can already vaccinate the healthcare workers and the elderly and those who have complications, it would be, it would be best that the children will be vaccinated. So there are also a lot of ongoing studies wherein the, the vaccines are already tested to children 5 to 11 years old and uh, the preliminary reports are good and then they also check the children for six months up to two years old and they also have good preliminary results so we'll, we'll just wait for it and i really hope that if we have allocation of resources and if the uh, persons who are who really need the, to be vaccinated first are already okay we can also vaccinate our children para dun sa may mga anak na 12 to 15 years old would you advise them to seek and, and get their children vaccinated? In the Philippines, the only vaccine that is approved by our FDA, but it is not, but it is not yet uh, in the rollout, but it is already approved by FDA, is the Pfizer vaccine. So uh, it is approved to be given to 12 to 18 years old. However, in the Philippines, the vaccination is care of the government, so we, we still cannot buy the vaccine. For now, though, we want to repeat that the best thing that we can do to protect our children is to get vaccinated ourselves. Vaccines are effective at preventing the spread of COVID-19, and they continue to work against all variants. So if you're eligible, please get vaccinated as soon as possible. Now, another effective way to protect our children is to always follow minimum health standards. Dr. Anjanette, it's worth reviewing these safety protocols para sa ating mga viewers. Let's discuss this. We advise them to wash your hands. So be a good example to your children. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and then do social distancing. And then as much as possible, avoid touching the face especially the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And then, of course, wear masks, protecting the nose and the mouth. It should be covered. And keep your house clean. Importante yung mga disinfectants around, um, cleaning it with soap and water, uh, the, the surfaces, because these are areas that could uh, link, wherein the virus can linger. Dr. Anjanette, pag-usapan naman natin ang flu vaccine. Uh, do you recommend this be given to children? What, what's your advice to the parents? For me, it's very important that we give flu vaccine right now. It's the flu season. Most especially, it's, it's raining right now. So we get cases left and right having uh, flu-like illnesses, which is almost like COVID, right? Iba ang COVID, ang initial presentation is cough, colds, and fever. Same thing with flu. It's just cough, colds, and fever. So just to protect ourselves and the people around us, it's very important that we give them flu vaccine. It's available not only in government, but in also in private um, institutions and private individuals. We want to minimize anything that could harm or make your child's immune system any weaker. So despite the pandemic of COVID-19, marami pang ibang mga germs ang, ang nasa paligid natin, and that's including the flu. So keeping your children healthy is as important as teaching them preventive measures. More on this when we return. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health, so stay with us on CNN Philippines. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought a whole new set of challenges for parents, including teaching children to follow health protocols. We've rounded up a list of the safety guidelines for children and how best to explain them to your family. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and this is MedTalk Health Talk, where your health always comes first. Wearing a mask is key in reducing the risk of infection. Here at home, face masks need to be worn by children two years and older. But we all know how uncomfortable these face masks can be. Imagine what it's like for your younger children. Dr. Yen, 
Do you have any tips uh, to successfully introduce face masks to children? Even in my, in my clinic, so the children really don't like to wear masks. So I make it the point that the, the mother should uh, wear their mask first so that the children can follow. So as mentioned, the mask should cover the nose and the mouth. So at times I give the children masks who has cartoon characters and colors and, and they were happy wearing it. So it's also nice that you will buy the masks which are with uh, cartoon characters and with, with, with colors so that the children will be happy to wear it. And then when you, when you show to them that you are wearing masks and the mother is wearing masks, they will also follow you. Another good tip to follow is having a good relationship with your doctor, with your pediatrician, which is more important uh, now more than ever. Dr. Antoinette, uh, uh, telehealth is available nowadays because of the current situation, but why is there some hesitation from uh, a lot of people to actually connect with their pediatricians through telehealth? some of the patients or some of the parents doesn't have access to internet. So an option that we can give them is to use the telephone, telephone just to call them, or maybe go to the nearest health centers or near, nearest private um, uh, physician or hospitals wherein they can do access or get access to health care. Another thing is if we have internet, there are different um, platforms, medical platforms that the doctors can use and the, the doctors use nowadays to access their, their patients. Now, apart from wearing masks, we also need to teach children positive preventive measures against COVID-19, like social distancing and, of course, always washing their hands. Dr. Anjanette, let's discuss the best way to go about this. You know what? I have, I have uh, met this acronym, WHEN, W-H-E-N. It's an easy thing to remember. So W stands for washing hands, would equal that of um, health wearing mask, do social distancing. E is educating ourselves, educating our, 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 the people around us of what to do in times of crisis, in times of infection. And N is for nutrition, um, giving our children the, uh, the right nutrition, the right food, so that they will not be able to contract the disease. So that's when. Now, Dr. Yen, what's your advice to parents who would like to have their, their regular schedule of vaccines for their child uh, accomplished? First, I do telemedicine with them. They will message me and then I will check first the kids if they have cough, fever and colds and then I will give them the schedule time. Like for example, I'll, give, I'll tell them that you'll come at around 10 a.m. So the next child will be at around 10.30. So I make sure that the kids are properly spaced also. Uh, the the child who is scheduled for 10 o'clock will 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 be vaccinated at 10 o'clock, and then by 10:30 another child will come. So I also space my children every 30 minutes. That's why in all of my patients they still go go for me for vaccination. But ultimately we need to talk to our children about COVID-19. They too are experiencing a big change uh, because of this pandemic, and as much as possible we need to help them feel safe as well as protected. Dr. Yen, can you share with us some tips on how, uh, how parents can help their children cope with this Delta variant? Because the children are really so afraid with the pandemic. And the, re the best thing that we really have to do as parents and as doctors is to really educate them. We really have to tell them that, you know, there is really a pandemic. So we can break it to them gently. We have to tell them properly that there is a pandemic, but there is, uh, you can see, you might hear that uh, a lot of persons are dying and there, there might be death among their loved ones. But we can always tell them the good side of things. We can mm -hmm. tell them that we can prevent it by, by wearing the mask properly. And you also have to wear a face shield, especially if you are two years old and above. And then after that, as much as possible, uh, kids should stay at home unless they go to their doctors for a vaccination. Thank you, pediatric infectious disease specialist Dr. Annalyn Reyes and pediatric pulmonologist Dr. Anjanit De Leon for guiding us in our topic today. We hope our conversation was very helpful for our viewers. Let's all work together to keep our children safe and protected from the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and we'll see you again next time. Stay safe, everyone.